Okay, welcome back to part two of this series. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing you how to um, use this function that we've created um, to, you know, actually make the page that I demonstrated in part zero. Um, just something I forgot in the end of the last part. We need to add a quick comment just to say what this image does. So, um, as the water mark image to image and saves it to output. Not the best comment ever, but does the job. Um, so now we've done that, we need to go back to our image page um, and we need to um, create a, well, we need to actually use this function properly instead of just having it do nothing. Um, so at the moment this will just output to the screen the image because empty parameter here. Anyway, um, so what we need to do is create a random name and we need to create a unique name to save the image with. So we're going to create a new variable called image name. This is going to be equal to a string, just for the sake of that. Um, before I do this, I do want to point out that I, there are probably better ways to do this, um, because what I'm going to do could potentially, not very likely to at all, but could potentially have a collision with the name, meaning an image might be overwritten. Um, I'm just doing this because it's like an easy one-line way of doing it, but there are, like I said, there are sort of better ways. Now I've gone through that in another video that I've forgotten the name of, but go back and watch them all <laughs> to find out. No, don't do that. But basically you need to come up with a way that um, is absolutely foolproof against causing image collisions. File name collisions, sorry. Anyway, the location we want to save the image to, if you just remember going back to our root folder here, is the images folder, which is currently empty. So we want to save it in images with a unique-ish name. So images slash something and the something is going to be an md5 hash of the current time so we're going to use micro time true here and what that does is just gets the current time in seconds since that date that I always forget um, and also it includes the sort of microseconds part uh, I'm not sure how precise that is but it's very 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 unlikely to cause a name collision but it's possible so just I wouldn't use this just saying that just using it because it's an easy one-line way of generating a name that we can use anyway after that we need the file extension which is going to be .png because we're going to save all our images with PNG as a PNG um, well just because we did here we use the image PNG function so they need the PNG extension so we just need to pass in that name here image name like so um, and now that should upload the image. So if we can, we can just test this by going back to our browser and reloading this page. No syntax errors. That's a good start. So if we just pick a new image, say um, that one, sunrise. Why not? Hit upload. Okay, that's bad. Um, oh, I've spelt something wrong. Brilliant. Uh, line 23 of image ink. So that's here and here. Image alpha bending. <laughs> okay. So going back to the browser, hitting reload. Uh, image uh, right, no such file directory. Spell images wrong. That's good. So going back to our here where we define the path. Images with an S. Reload. Whoops. <laughs> reload the browser. Not with F4. There we go. There we go. That's more promising. So we still get this output because we still have the print underscore R. But now if we check our images folder, we should see an image. If I just open this up in my image viewing thingy, um, you can just about see here. Well, I think you can see. I can make this a bit smaller. You can see that we have this um, watermark that's been added dynamically. So this has pretty much worked, minus a few typos. Um, so yeah, that's basically it. Success. So we can close this now. And we just need, the last thing we need to do is make the page a little bit more friendly. So going back to our folder, just for the sake of it, actually, let's stay in the images folder. It's nicer there. Uh, so let's just go to the function and remove this line, because we don't need that anymore. And let's go to our page. And just here, we need to add a bit of code to sh display the image if there is one. So what we're going to do is check to see if the image name is set. So if is set image name. And if it is, we just want to use this in an image tag. So we're going to do echo and then an image tag so image source and alt are required the alt we're just going to leave blank and the source is going to be 
the image name like so. So this will just output this name inside the source attribute of this image tag. So going back to the browser now, if we just reload this page, see without selecting a file we don't get anything output. If we browse for a file, uh, let's say that's not a very good one, that is quite a good one, hit upload, just picked a smaller file, there we go. So you can see that this image has been added, um, unfortunately this image is rather large. Um, wow, sorry, <laughs> I just forgot I had all these screenshots and uh, this is what my server used to look like about two months ago maybe. Cool, anyway, I'll look at those later. <laughs> um, so yeah, that's basically the end of this video series actually, um, because we've successfully had this uploaded. Um, there is just one quick thing I'd like to say about um, sort of security. Um, I've basically omitted every single security check that you should add in, in this. Um, using this code as it is now, there's basically no security issues uh, because for one, you're saving the image as with the random name with a .png extension, meaning that no one could upload a file that had PHP code in it that would then be executed. Um, and also because the image is being processed um, using the various image functions and more most importantly output with image PNG um, and you know loaded with these functions if these functions find that this isn't an image or they're not able to you know um, load the image because it's like a text file or something um, they will basically fail um, but the problem is that you would just get loads of errors on the screen so it's not very user friendly so probably what I would recommend you do is you know use the old errors checking method up here so you'd have like an empty start with an errors array like so and then you do some checks so if it's an image you do oh if it's an image it's false even you do something in the errors array like so ah <laughs> getting a bit weird now never mind and then here you check to see if the errors array is still empty so if empty errors do the upload like so um, if not you know display errors um, so that I've gone through that before as well I just thought I'd sort of quickly mention it at the end um, because it's you know something that I'm trying to make this sort of a bit of a real world example ish um, Obviously, in like a real-world example, you need to check every sort of possible error that you can think of um, to prevent. I mean, the user won't be able to do anything bad, but you want your site to look pro and good. And displaying PHP errors is not that at all. Anyway, that's pretty much it. In fact, that's exactly it. I'm going to end right now. So thanks for watching, and nothing else to say.